Hi there, thank you for joining. My name is Paul, I'm an advocate at LakeFS. If you have a few minutes, I would like to walk you through how LakeFS works and explain what separates us in the data space today. We're gonna to start by covering what LakeFS is, and we're really about two things, source control and big data. We see ourselves as bringing source control to the world of big data. This bridges an artificial gap that exists when working with data and when working with code. We believe there's no reason you shouldn't be able to adopt the same patterns when managing both, no matter how large your data is. This is uh, important because there's been a dramatic increase in the amount of data being analyzed by all types of organizations and for the most part, it finds its way into one of the major object store technologies. This is because they are pretty amazing at performance. They're cost effective. They have a good developer experience and they have good connectivity to other tooling. At LakeFS, we've been heavy users of object stores in our careers, which means we're familiar with each of these strengths. At the same time, we're also familiar with the functional gaps they have for more advanced data workflows required by modern data platforms. So we created LakeFS to um, fill those gaps and make object stores even better. The way we do this goes back to several development best practices we see data teams using object stores struggle to do. So for example, you would like to identify and fix an error that makes it into production instantly, yet when working over an object store, there often isn't a simple, elegant way to do this. We thought through this challenge, and what we realized is that the solutions we were looking for could be achieved by adding the source control primitives already used with Git for code and extending object store functionality to include them. So for example, fixing that production data error is now possible with a one line revert command that restores your entire data lake to a previously known point in time. Hopefully it uh, makes sense why it's important to bring source control to the world of big data and to give you a better sense of how, how it works I'd like to hop into a demo that shows you LakeFS in action. We'll, we'll start here in the UI of a LakeFS installation over an example data lake. We're looking at the, the demo repository, which is created over an S3 bucket, though we could have picked any of the major cloud providers. Uh, the interface should look pretty familiar to your existing object stores interface. Uh, showing all the different data sets contained and the objects, though the LakeFS version comes with a few additional features we touched on earlier. First, we can check out the commits tab, which shows all of the different commits that have been taken over this data set. Similar to, as with code, commits give a snapshot of the entire repository that can be referenced via the generated commit ID. Next, I want to show you how uh, we can use a compute engine like Spark to um, read in this data uh, and perform different transformations over it. So we're looking at code to read it in from uh, both a LakeFS repo and S3. The code looks uh, exactly the same for both, except for with LakeFS. We point to the name of the repo and the name of the branch we're working on. In this case, demo repo and main. Once we read in uh, the data frame, we can run example queries and transformations over the data uh, with a negligible impact on performance, despite there being hundreds of versions of the LakeFS version data. We ran this pretty complex query over both the uh, LakeFS data frame and the S3 data frame. Uh, they complete in almost the same time, just under 50 seconds here and just over 50 seconds here, um, despite, again, the, the different versions. 
another important feature I want to show you is over on the branches tab. So far, we've been working on a single branch. However, to easily test changes to uh, data, we can create a new branch, which I'll give a name uh, Spark Test. Uh, this creates a logical copy of the data without actually duplicating it. To do things like uh, test different changes and work collaboratively, the LakeFS branching model is a great way to do so. And we can go back to our notebook, update the branch name to Spark Test, and read in this data uh, all the same, perform transformations to the data without affecting what happens on the main branch. Hopping back into the presentation, I'd like to wrap up with explaining how the core principles we designed LakeFS with from the start allow it to provide source control at this scale of data. So we use a data model we call Graveler, which uses a set of SST tables to represent the entire key space of a repository at a commit. These SST tables are split into ranges and meta ranges that efficiently uh, allow for storage and access of the underlying data objects. Next, we are proudly format agnostic. This means whether it's CSV data or Parquet, Iceberg, structured or unstructured data, uh, LakeFS can provide source control management all the same. And finally, we designed LakeFS to sit at the infrastructure level of a data stack. We believe that version data should be available to any tool and achieve this by exposing a superset of the S3 API. Uh, so any tool that knows how to read and write from an object store can integrate with LakeFS via a simple uh, endpoint configuration. So that's, that's what I wanted to share about LakeFS. I hope this has been helpful for your understanding and you enjoyed it. Please check out our documentation, join our Slack group, tr try it out, and join our growing community of data innovators. Thank you for watching and have an excellent rest of your day. Thank you.